acrylic pour your manicure? Sure, why not? Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. For my last few videos, I've had art on my thumbnail and I've gotten lots of requests to show you how I did it. So let's do that together now. This will work if you have natural nails or if you wear artificial nails. To begin with, this is an acrylic skin. If you're not familiar with acrylic skins, all they are is acrylic paint that's been left to dry on a surface from which it can be easily peeled off. Like this. So this is a skin. It's just dry acrylic paint. And now I can apply this to my nails, a box, a card, whatever I like. Now, will any acrylic skin do for our manicure? Well, yes. But you've got to think about this from an artistic point of view. Your thumbnail is a small canvas. And if you want to do your entire manicure, your other nails are even smaller. So you want a pattern that has enough interest in a very small space. And a lot of acrylic pouring paintings and skins may not have that. They may be beautiful as a larger canvas, but looking for an area as small as your thumbnail that has a lot of interest or enough interest may be challenging because like this area, for example, that wouldn't be good. An area like this, maybe a little better. This here, definitely better. Nah, you know, so you've got to think about that sort of thing. So what to do? Well, we're going to pour specifically for our manicure so that we can get patterns that have more interest in small spaces. So for this, small cells are ideal if you're going to use cells at all. So here I have a few colors that were already mixed and in the description box below the video I have my mixing formula. Don't worry so much about what colors I'm using because for your manicure you may want to use a whole set of other colors or less colors. Just pick a couple of light colors as well as a couple of darker colors so that you have enough contrast in your pour. And because I'm going to be making a small tight pour, I don't want to have large amounts of any one color going in at any time because I don't want any one color to overwhelm the pattern. So I'm going to lay colors in slowly, one on top of another more than sinking through each other. So using these little squeeze bottles is really perfect for that. Now, this video assumes that you already know how to do a dirty pour. If you don't know anything about them or aren't familiar with how to do one, there are videos on my channel that can show you that in detail. Any decent acrylic paint will do. I don't use anything special. I just make sure to get my paints to the consistency of warm honey, and they all need to have the same consistency so that the flow is good. Personally, I'm a fan of Floetrol and now Deco Art's new pouring medium for thinning my paints to that ideal consistency. Now my dirty cup is made and I'm going to pour it on this uh, piece of freezer paper that I've just wrapped around a six inch ceramic tile to give the freezer paper some support. And I'm going to just do a small stretched swirl or stretched ring pour keeping in mind that this is literally just for my manicure. So I want the stretch to really be wide enough so that my bands are not too tight together.
And now I'm spreading some white paint along the edge so that when I go to tilt this, it doesn't fold in on itself, which it would be inclined to do if there was no paint ahead of it to move when I tilt. I'm not going to fill in here because I'll let that rock into itself. See how now this will close in on itself. And then that will hopefully close in that space. Now I don't want this to become too thin either because I don't want it to be dangerous for me to pull on. I think I'm going to stop there. Because for me, I'm only, I only care about doing my thumb. I don't need to do oh. ten fingers or even five fingers. So there is a lot that can be done with this. This area is really pretty. This area is super pretty too. I can get some fun here. This yellow area, yellow orangey area. There's just a lot. I'm going to have a good time with this one. Let me zoom in so that you can kind of see the options. I really like this area here. It reminds me of sort of flowers. Yeah, I think we did good. Now, since I have all this lovely white paint just sitting there doing nothing, we might as well play with the edge because come on, it's right there. So I'm just using a bamboo skewer, laying it on the paint ever so gently and pulling so that the white paint that's just sitting there doesn't end up going to waste because there's really nothing I'd be able to do with it. That part of the skin would just be tossed aside. So I don't want to blow because if I blow then I'll mess up what's going on here. All I'm doing here is stretching it. And I have to remember to wipe after every pass in a case like this. Oh, look at that blue. I may have a hard time using this as a skin now. It's just kind of pretty on its own. Oh. <laughs> that has definitely happened to me before. I'd be making something for a skin. I'm like, oh no, it's too pretty. I don't want to cut that up. And it didn't end up being a skin. <laughs> this might end up being the case here. Okay, these are like the prettiest tendrils ever. Seriously, I am loving these. There's some blue there. I want it. <laughs> Yay. Oh, look at that. Ugh. Okay. There's no way I can cut that. It's just too darn amazing. I'm going to have to think of something else to do with this. But I can't cut it up into little pieces. I just can't do it. All right, I need a little more white here. Okay, so I promise I will get back to the manicure. <laughs> I, just got, I just got a little sidetracked, okay? <laughs> there will be, I will finish the nail. Oh man, now I'm annoyed that I made this on a six inch little tile and that I didn't do this like on a canvas or something. Ugh. Because it's crazy pretty. Since I'm likely to keep this as a painting as opposed to a skin now, I filled in the rest of the area with white so that it's not like the odd shape that it was before 
which was going to be fine if it was just a skin. I wouldn't have cared. But even though it's on freezer paper, I'd still be able to trim this down to a six by six inch square and I could still frame it um, because the top layer is still acrylic. No one would ever know it's underneath except you and me. <laughs> But I would love some of your ideas. I'd love to know what sorts of things come to mind for you to do with this. Would you cut it? Because I don't think I'm going to be able to. It's too cool to cut. But <laughs> I luckily have other skins I could use with a manicure because this is supposed to be a manicure video. So... I got a little sidetracked by the pretty. <laughs> I wonder if I will ever reach a point where I don't care about tendrils. I feel like that's just not possible. These right here are my favorites. <laughs> I love these. Oh, I like those down there too. <sighs> okay, I'm going to put this away to dry now. And we'll get back to the manicure, all right? Because that's what this is. What, that's... That's why we're here, right? <laughs> All right, let's get back to our manicure. Okay, so back to the task at hand. Yeah, yeah, I know, I said it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use this skin, which is the one I had been wearing, since there are some fun spots still left on it. Either that, or I'm gonna use a piece from a skin that I cut earlier. Okay, now. If you're working on loose artificial nails, it's pretty easy. You can just, let's say this is a nail. You can just take a skin and just keep moving it around and seeing what you like for the nail. And then once you have a part that you like, you attach it to the nail and then you attach the nail to your hand and you're good to go. But if you're working on natural nails or an already attached nail, you don't have that option. The answer for me was to make a template. And to make the template, I used a scrap piece of acrylic skin and I wrapped it around my nail until I could sort of see the shape of my nail. And then I just took a pencil and followed the line of my cuticle and the full form of my nail. Why use a skin rather than just a piece of paper? Because the skin will take the shape of your nail as you're working on it, whereas a piece of paper will be harder to manage. Okay, so now I would cut around the line that I just drew. So let's say that this is the piece that I cut out of the skin. Once I have that template, I can use it on this skin to trace out the shape I need. But if you plan on doing this more than once, this extra little step might come in handy. What I did after cutting out my little template was I took a piece of scrap plastic. Uh, this is a piece of Duralar. You can use Yupo, acetate, you can even use cardstock. I just use this that way. I don't have to worry about it getting wet or whatever. And then I cut out a window to match my template. And I cut out a window that's a little, just a hair wider than my template is. And the reason for that is to take into account the width of my pencil line when I draw. So now with this, I can slide this around and find whatever spot I want to use for my thumb or whatever finger it is that you're going to be using. All right, I've picked out a couple of pieces. Well, these two definitely go better with my current manicure, but you know, I, I kind of like the fact that this one totally doesn't go because it really stands out that way, so I'm not sure. And then this one kind of goes, but not as much as these two, you know. So play around with it. You decide. But I think I'm going to go with this one just for fun. And I can always change my mind afterwards because none of this is permanent. That's the beauty of this. 
So now to attach it, I could use glue, but I kind of don't want to. And there's a reason for that. What I found is if I put nail polish, and this is just clear nail polish, onto this nail polish, you got, if you've done your nails before, you know how the second coat, like, really is the one that takes a while to dry. That first coat, it'll dry pretty quickly. But we want one that's gonna be a little tacky. And I'm gonna let this get to a point where it's pretty dry, but not totally dry. The goal is to get to the point where it's kind of dry, but if you touched it, you'd leave a fingerprint. And I know you know what that's like, because <laughs> we've all been there. So, yeah, I'm there. And then once you're there, that's when I press my skin on. And the reason that I wait for that is because at, when it's at that stage, your skin is almost repositionable. It's almost like posted glue. And like I can still remove it. See, it kind of gets a little gunky, but that's okay. And what's nice about acrylic skins is you can stretch them. So, and I'm gonna press it down I'm going to really burnish it and stretch it as much as I need to get it to be as flat as I can. And then my last step is with a cuticle stick is to push the ends down. And try not to rip your skin. Be gentle during that process. Some skins can be really fragile. It depends on how thick your skin is. And now I am actually using the cuticle stick to break off the rest of the skin. And then once that's done, then I will just really fold back the end of the skin here and very, very gently file I file down. Because if you go back and forth this way, you're going to rip your skin, you're gonna move your skin, and you don't wanna do that. So coming down this way, go against the skin, like you're pulling down on the skin and making it sort of turn the corner of the shape of your nail. Now, once I have it attached this way, I'm gonna now wait about half an hour to really let it bond to the nail polish, it will bond. Like now after that half hour, I will not be able to peel it back up again. And then once that's done, I will give it however many coats of clear that I want to get it to be as shiny as I want. There you have it. How to get your pour on, literally. <laughs> now, I think it would be a blast if we all started doing this as a way to represent our medium. Pick a finger and show the world that acrylic pouring and art in general is part of your life. And if you do, send me a message on my Facebook page with a picture. I'd love to see it. I will add the best pictures to an upcoming video. So get creative. Let me know if you enjoyed this with a thumbs up. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. I'm getting so corny in my old age. All right. <laughs> but seriously, let me know in the comments if you're going to do this and what colors you would choose. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe. There's so much more to come. Thanks to all of you that have kindly sponsored me and to all of you using my links to get you to Amazon. I appreciate it more than you can know. As always, thank you for watching. Go let your creative nature shine. See you next time. Bye now.